Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. I've been given a pulse uh, thingy. <laughs> I should restart that. A blood pressure monitor, a pulse thingy. Crikey, what is happening with me? But it's very early in the morning. I will, um, I will give myself that concession that it is very early in the morning, and. As far as I'm aware, it uh, just doesn't work. And these might even be new batteries. So I'm just going to check the old battery cell in here. Uh, 0.8 volts. The um, weird thing is, I did have a quick go at this. And it doesn't seem to want to work, certainly from the uh, AC adapter input. These batteries don't look too healthy. So we'll just swap them out briefly. Just in case, just in case there's no video here, unless we just want to tear one down, see what's inside. I mean, I definitely want to tear one down and see what's inside. It's really weird because all these years we've had these, I've never really, uh... no, definitely dead. Um, I had a look inside. I kind of, it's, it's one of those things where I kind of think I know what's inside, so I'm not that intrigued. But let's have a look and we'll see if I'm correct so my view of this is that you will have a pressure sensor maybe one of those differential pressure sensors I think we covered one before you might see me interfacing one with a booby board but it also I think it's a combination because if you think of how they read uh, blood pressure normally they kind of need sound as well oh hang on a minute one screw intriguing um, so it might have some sort of audio equipment too. So the idea is that you put pressure, I'll just if you haven't used one by the way, so there's a little pump in here and you have this thing on your arm. Everybody must know how these work. And you, you see I can blowing in there, right? So blowing in the pipe, it's inflating that up. Uh, so it, once it's inflated, I think it listens. It can hear like your pulse. Bzz, bzz, bzz. I don't think, if there's the possibility it uses pressure, you know, differentials in the pressure to sort of calculate the pulse, but it might also hear it, I'm not sure. And then it just basically lets the pressure out. I think it's kind of until it doesn't hear the pulse anymore. I'm not really sure how they just determine what's the high blood pressure and the low blood pressure, but it is definitely audio, because if you've ever seen them do it manually, um, with one of those things with the mercury and the um, they're always listening to your pulse. Okay, so there's a lot of snap clips on this thing. One more, one more. We're almost there. Come on now. There we go. Nice and simple then so far. Let's have a little zoom in. So you've got the screen and that's just a standard little LCD screen, but nice, nice big clear one. Looking underneath, I can see the motor and the pump and everything. There's loads of cool things in this. So this is going to be fun. And look at that. There's your on-off switch and your start switch. But also on the board, they've got these very small little touch contacts. So they might just reuse, I don't know if they're additional functions or they just are a duplicate of the existing functions for a different kind of system. So they might still use this PCB with something, but like for a much smaller one, a little buttons, like a wrist one or something. So how do we get in? That little bit further so we need to pop this off I can see the little piezo element and that that's that'll be the buzzer Oop, okay gently gently and I'm going to I'm just determining the best way of getting this done I think if we undo the uh, button here that'll give us enough slack we don't really want to break it if it's not broken let's keep all the screws in one place Ooh, look at that, that's cool. Very, very cool indeed. This, I, I, you know, this is one of those really nice things to get hold of if, if you ever get one, because it's got so much fun parts in it that are pretty tricky to buy, really. I don't know even where I'd go to look for these parts, but let's cover them one at a time. Let's start at the mechanical end, so we'll go, I'll zoom in and back again so you can see from the top. So this is the output port. So here you've got a motor, with an air pump, so cool as hell to have that. And then that got me a little uh, thing out. 
So there it's going through this sort of T-piece block, right? And it's blowing it through here. So I'm guessing it's it's got to be sucking that air in from somewhere. And I think it could be this. See where it says it's got a pass QC there? There's definitely some sort of contraption in there that looks like it's a port. Let's, let's just dig a bit deeper, get that out. <laughs> so modular. This, I think, is where it'll be a filter. Look, there you go. So it's a valve. So what's, what I feel is going to happen is this is sort of going to be buzzing away, and I think that'll be the air intake. Again, we can't quite tell uh, until it's running, but we could put power on the motor. In fact, we could hook this whole thing up to a booby board, which would be amazing, and just control it ourselves. If we can't get this working, we're going to be doing stuff with this, I can tell you. And then you can see this solenoid here. It's going to be like a dump valve. Let's see if I can get this out. You know in your turbo car, you get that. That, I feel, is the dump valve. So when you, when the pressure cup needs to let all the air out, this gets activated and dumps the air pressure out. So this is absolutely fun pneumatics. I mean, I've never really um, <coughs> considered since Lego days that you could have fun pneumatics, but these are definitely fun pneumatics. Pardon me. <coughs> right. And I want to show you something else on the PCB right away. That is cool as hell. Now I've got a load of these. I've, I've used these in the past. These are um, pressure uh, sensors. And you can see the little pipe just goes on the end of that. And they work in different ways. Sometimes they've got two ports, so they're a differential between two sides of things. Sometimes they've got one port and then just they're just sort of closed on say one side and it's so it's com comparing the pressure to atmospheric. So there's all sorts of configurations. They used to be quite expensive. I don't know if they still are. They probably are. And you can see here the board is dual footprinted, so there's clearly um, maybe a different footprint there, or these are test points for this thing. But fun as hell. Generally, the ones I've played with are analog devices, so they'll be coming to here, which will be basically a microcontroller under this blob, looking at the PCB underneath there. Nothing there, just a few passives behind on the back of that PCB. All the main gubbins are here. So you've got four megahertz crystal, You've got a bunch of caps here, probably to deal with the actual solenoid firing so you don't have this thing browning out and resetting itself. There's your buzzer. And you've got a couple of, again, transistors here, probably uh, one for the motor and maybe one for that dump valve thing. So you see here, it actually says on the PCB valve. So that's the uh, valve one. And I can see the uh, traces of this transistor going over that way. And I can see the traces of the pump going to this. So these two transistors are for the pump and the, the valve. Interesting enough though, you see this piezo speaker, how it's just sort of splodged on here. You see this wire, this blue wire here, goes to a track on the PCB that says beep. So interestingly enough, that's obviously how it's designed to be fitted with that bit of wire. It's not bod wire, that's just in the design. And then you've got your three capacitors here. And of course, your inputs here, ground, switch one, switch two, switch three, and switch four. So really, we could just, uh, we're, there's no point um, just like messing with this if we're not gonna try to fix it, or at least diagnose what's going wrong with it. So I'm just gonna check the nomenclature on it. And I think it's a uh, nine, nine, nine volts input, is it? Yeah, nine volts input, where are you? Oh, right there, DC six volts. Well, almost right. So we've got our bench power supply here. That happens to be 5.98. I think it's close enough. Center positive, so we'll plug that in. I'm gonna turn that on and drawing currently, no current. It says 22 milliamps. For me, that's just nothing. It's, I don't think it's actually working. So I'm gonna hit this start on off. Dead, dead as anything. Let's have a check of the actual board itself. We've got our meter here. We've got uh, three wires, a yellow wire, a green wire, and a white wire. So let's see what we're gonna get across those wires. So the white wire is ground, the green wire is certainly live. But what does the yellow wire do? That's an interesting one. Is the yellow wire like a power detect or something? It must be very intriguing to look at that so but there is definitely power going there oh the yellow wire that gets closed to allow power from the battery looking at the circuit here so that's just a kind of a battery um, a battery flowy thing I might just pop off this circuit board now because remember we said on the back there was nothing but passives one of those 
things might be a few. So let's have a look. I mean, that could be a simple fix. Because if you imagine something like this, which has got motors and things that were and solenoids, it could be a scenario where it could have quite a high current. And it does make sense that there could be a fuse on here. It does give us an idea as well of what's on there. So let's zoom in. Boosh. I'll try to hold it steady. So that's the bottom of the pressure sensor, by the way. So you can see that there is a hole in the board, and that's to let the uh, sort of pressure through if necessary. So that's that's kind of fascinating. The idea is um, that maybe you could have a different type of sensor. It says auto here, so this bit is auto. Remember, I'm reading this upside down, so I do apologize. Um, and on, and on, and on, Ariston. Test points, just looking for an F. So if you look on a board, if you get anything like this, you, what you want to do is study it and study it and study it and look for the nomenclature that has like an F. I'm going to tilt it slightly to me. It might be less viewable for you at home. because I'm trying to look at the board as well as we speak. Um, because if you can find one that says like an F1, F2, F3, those are normally fuses and there'll be a surface mount fuse. And there's every possibility that you could fix that if you if you find it. Another way of doing this is if you look here where the power is coming in, so you've got the green, red, all these wires, and I'm going to turn it over again just to make sure. Yep, there's absolutely no um, passives or fuses on this side. It just doesn't have anything like that. Trace them around, and you might be able to see where they would go. Like I kind of see stuff going to these transistors and whatnot. Um, the idea being you might be able to find the first port of call on this board could could well be the um, fuse. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop the uh, the camera so I can get my head in real close because <laughs> my, my eyes are feeling sore today. And uh, I'm going to have a quick study through and uh, we'll jump cut back to see if I've discovered anything there. Okay, I've gone through the circuit at a very high level. There's power to the switch, there's power going to the main components, so it doesn't seem to be a fuse there that I can see at least. So it just it's one of those things where it's going to be like a dead component, and that could be a dead transistor, dead microcontroller, um, beyond at the moment probably the time I'm prepared to spend in something that you can pay for uh, you know, 20 quid for. However, that being said, I did do a tiny bit more investigating because of course there is power going to the appropriate parts which means you can play with it. So if you look here you've got the, oh there we go, you've got your transistors here. One of them controls the solenoid and one of them controls the motor and you can see I've blocked off the port here and uh, I have discovered, let's see which one's which here. So that one is the valve, the solenoid valve. And interestingly enough, that valve is a safety feature. That valve is actually open by default. So you can imagine if this device uses power or freaks out, and it'll just open that valve if you lose it and let the air out of the cuff. So that's quite neat. And then the other one, of course, is the motor. So to play with this, though, it does mean you have to short two things out at once. So I've got one shorting tool and I've got another shorting tool. So we'll close the valve and then we'll short the motor. And you can see that is inflating. And then if I let go, but if I shut the valve again, which is awesome, so that's pretty cool. And something else we've discovered, so remember I was saying I was trying to work out how does it detect the uh, pulse? It must be doing it only through pressure because we know that that's the only pipe that goes to that part. Interesting enough, though, you've got this black blob here, which I think is the screen controller now looking at it because we've got an awful lot of traces coming to this black blob. But then when I turn it over, let's have a look. There are some other components here that could be a micro. So we should have a look a bit closer at those, see if we can get a number of it. And remember, it's upside down for me, but this is a 74HC00D. And I think, oh, crikey. <laughs> I'm not, I, is that a memory chip? I, I, I really should uh, try to uh, write these down beforehand. An L34DG, but I know you like to play at home. And here is an Atmel, a 24C02N. So there's a few components there. And then just a smattering, a smattering of passives and small transistors. So that's absolutely a fun thing, though, to have, isn't it, as a, as a sort of project workbench here, because you've got 
good stuff here. You've got tack switches, you've got decent looking caps, you've got a pressure sensor which are expensive or then used to be very expensive to buy to play with you've got a piezo buzzer you've got a couple of good transistors you've got a nice dc jack you've got a really good uh, air pump and dump valve solenoid and intake filter and then you've got your pressure cuff so gosh i i suspect you should be able to actually wire these up and try to make your own uh, you know at least pulse monitor if not blood pressure monitor and that is a very interesting idea for a future video. So if you haven't, by the way, please uh, feel free to take a look at my Patreon page. Um, I'm thinking about adding some actual proper stretch goals now so we start doing some, some harder core projects. We're working a lot on the Odroid and doing PCB design at the moment, so it's only uh, a matter of time before we start exploring those a little bit further. And jump on the Discord. The Discord channel is really rocking right now. It's really taking off. This is almost like not just a YouTube channel, it's a YouTube slash Discord slash Patreon channel. So if you really want to get involved, please come over to Discord. Let's all start talking about all of these interesting projects and all of the interesting things we can do. As ever, thank you for watching.